Hey guys, I'm Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we are going to talk about collections of S object. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to stay updated with proper Salesforce tutorials and want to watch more tutorials, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Also, if you have thoughts or question, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear from you and promise I will read every single one. Thank you so much guys. And now you can proceed with the video. So lists can contain as objects among other types of elements. So we know how to create a list of a specific type. Similarly, we can create a list of as object. Now list of as objects can be used for bulk processing of data. Whenever we want to process on bulk of data, then definitely we need a list of as objects. Now to declare a list of S objects, use the list keyword followed by the S object type within the angular brackets. For example, you can create a list of contact as I have created there. And once it's created, we can use this list to add contact objects, which is nothing but contact records. Now we can assign a list variable directly to the result of a so-called query. I know we haven't discussed about so-called query yet. So definitely we will do that later down the line in the coming videos. But there also you can create a list of a specific S object and hold the result of a so-called query. Now the so-called query returns a new list populated with the records being returned. Now make sure that the declared list variable contains the same S object that is being queried or we can use a generic S object data type as well. Now here I have written a so-called query. Now we will discuss about so-called query in detail. So whatsoever is written within the square brackets is nothing but a so-called query. And the result of that so-called query will be nothing but a list of records. Right now I'm performing the query on the list of account object. And that's why when I created the list that that time I must declare list of account because I'm fetching list of accounts with the so-called query. So make sure the data type should match. Or alternatively, you can also use a list of S object, list of generic S object, which can hold result of any so-called query. Now, a list of generic S object can hold records of different specific S objects. And this is helpful to perform bulk operation on multiple objects at the same time. For example, I can create two different S objects, specific S object, like I have created an account variable ACC and a contact variable con. Both are storing values of different fields of those S objects. And then I can add these different S objects inside a list of generic S object. And then I can perform a bulk operation or I can perform a DML operation on both types of S objects using this generic S object. So in those situations, when you want to perform DML operation on multiple objects of different types, generic S object list is really helpful. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. Hey guys, welcome to the practical session of collections of S object. So let's go to our developer console. So click on the gear icon and click on developer console and open the anonymous window by clicking on debug and open execute anonymous window. Now, as discussed in the theoretical section, we can create a list of S object variable. So just like we create an S object variable, similarly, we can create a list of S object variable. Now, obviously, when an S object variable can hold one record, then a list of S object variable can hold a list of records. So here we will create a list of S object, just like we create a list of string or a list of integer. The only thing is instead of specifying integer or string, we will specify the name of the S object. Now this list can hold different records. That means if one S object variable is creating one record, then we can have more than one S object inside this list. So for example, here I'm creating two S objects with name proper Salesforce tutorials and another one with name PST. Now these two variables can be added to the list by using the add method of the list. And then we can certainly print the list, which will represent or which will show on the log these two S objects. So in system.debug, we will print the accounts list and execute. So you can clearly see it is a list of accounts with two records separated by this comma. Now the main benefit of creating a list of S object is you can perform bulk operations. So suppose if you want to perform any specific operation on both the records, you can perform directly on the list and that will be performed on both of these records. We will discuss more about bulk operations in detail later down the line. After some videos, we are also going to talk about so-called queries. 
so when we write a so called query which will return more than one records that time also this list of s object is quite handy now just like in the previous video i am going to write another so called query over here don't worry if you are not getting what query i have written what does it means because we are going to talk about it in detail in our coming videos now with the help of this so called query i am fetching all the account records that is existing in the org Now let me just show this list as well as the number of records in it with the help of size method. Now definitely this size method will tell us how many records are there in the list which should match the total number of account records in the org. So let me execute this and you can see it is showing 13 that means there should be 13 records of accounts in our org. We can verify that so to do that we can go to our org come to the account tab from the list view we can select all account and you can clearly see there are 13 account records in our org so whenever you are querying all the records or more than one records that time also this list of s object variable is quite handy to handle that list of records we can also create list of generic s object and that is handy when we want to perform bulk operation on different types of s object for example in the previous example we created a list of account and there in that list we have added two account records so whenever we want to perform any operation on both these account records that list of s object is handy but suppose if we are having one account record and one contact record and we want to perform same operation on both these records that means records of different types in that situation we can create a list of generic s object so let me show you that example now as you can see i am having two variables over here one is of account object and one is of contact object now let's suppose i want to perform one similar operation on both of them definitely i cannot create a list of account that can hold both of them or a list of contact that can hold both of them So in that situation I can certainly create a list of generic s object and this list can hold both these records because it's a generic s object it can have both these records as its element so I am doing objects dot add acc and objects dot add con and now I am printing objects let me click on execute and clearly you can see this list of s object is holding one account record and one contact record so guys we can create a list of specific s object when we want to perform bulk operation on more than one records of a specific s object we can create a list of specific s object when we are performing any type of so called query that is resulting more than one records and we can create a list of generic s object when we want to perform same operation on different types of specific s object records that marks the end of this video see you soon in the next video till then thank you and take care